I was very sensitive. Uh, I have memories of being a sensitive child and also being labeled as sensitive. So I do remember, you know, my, my parents um, labeling, labeling me in that way and just being very shy. Um, I think as I got older, I started to think that was a bad thing. It was I lacked confidence, I was insecure, and I started to kind of latch on to things in a maybe not healthy way, especially as a teenager. Um, but I was, yeah, I was a very quiet and reflective person, similar to how I am now, but now I have a little bit more confidence in, <laughs> in that. I honestly, I struggled a lot with making friendships as a, as a child, and I went through different friendship groups, um, as a lot of children and girls do, I think. But I, yeah, I struggled. And I, I think what happened, like I'm trying to, make a long story short, I guess here. Um, I latched, and what I mean by like when I latched onto things, I latched onto dating really early. I started experimenting with drugs quite early. I was drinking a lot. So I was getting into unhealthy behaviors that maybe a lot of people experiment with, but I think uh, I was experimenting with them a lot. And I think I was in a very unhealthy relationship when I was 14 and um, it was, it was very scary for, for me, but also for my parents. And they knew that they needed to get me out of that situation. And that's kind of when things started to to turn. And looking back on that, I wonder, do you, we talk a lot in the parenting membership about needs, right? Do you see what need you were trying to fulfill by going through those experiences? Um, I think I just wanted to feel a sense of belonging. And I looked for that in friendship groups. It wasn't easy for me to, um, to get that from friendship groups and I looked at that from my parents and it wasn't easy for me to feel that at home. Um, there was sort of temporary belonging from being in relationships with older men. There was temporary belonging from fitting in in social circles by trying drugs and, and drinking a lot. So I had these like moments of temporary belonging um, but inside I was really lost and scared and sad and I wasn't I didn't have the tools to to know how to feel those feelings yeah I think with regards to the parenting membership yes because I wasn't sure about the financial commitment um, and which route I would want to choose and, and, and how that would work or if that would work for me so there was that aspect. And then also just with working full time, obviously having two children, I wasn't sure if I'd be too overwhelmed with the with the modules and the content. Um, so I was a little bit hesitant about that, but I haven't found either of those things to be an issue. I feel like there's enough time in the month, for example, that for each module to get it done on my own pace. And, and even if I don't finish it in one month, I might finish it the next and that's okay with me. So I just try to really self-pace um, and, you know, depending on where my life's at at that time. Yeah. And so for someone who is hesitant about the financial commitment, um, what would you say to a parent who's thinking about that and thinking, I don't know if I want to sign up for something that I have to pay every month? Well, I would probably say, because um, to me, it's also, I would I would spend money on um, therapy and I, and I have and I do. So I... Uh, I kind of viewed it like <laughs> spending money on myself, on self-care, on um, wellness. I have, I actually do have that in our budget. We have a budget. So I, I've kind of lumped it into my like wellness portion of my budget. And my husband is on board with that. So that was how I could justify it. And also knowing that I, I plan to stay in the parenting membership after the first year. Um, and I think my year is actually almost complete. Um, which is crazy how fast it's gone because um, I've enjoyed it so much. And yeah, so I think just knowing that the price does change after the first year also makes a difference. It's it's a year commitment where you are paying a little bit more, but after that year, the price goes down um, quite a bit. You know what? I had a consult with you um, and I that was brought about by sharing in the circle community, which I also really appreciate that part of the membership too. Um, and I had shared, um, I forget exactly what I shared, but I had shared that I was having a hard time 
supporting my oldest son, which it always comes down to. Um, and I say that again in a good way because he really does. And I say this to him, like I'm lucky to be able to learn about myself um, through parenting you. And I do, I do believe that. And so anyways, I had shared something about um, struggling to support him. And at this time was a time that he was asking for a lot of autonomy to come back to that independence. And, and I've struggled to give that to him. And I remember talking to you and sharing one example of him drinking out of an almond milk carton. And looking back, I think, why would I want to say no to that? Like, I can't believe that I, I, I had the desire to say, don't do that though. And um, I think I might've even said it. And looking back, I, I think because I wasn't allowed to do that. So I wanted, and I don't, I'm not really sure why. <laughs> anyway, I get stuck on that apparently. <laughs> he still drinks out of milk cartons. He enjoys it. I thoroughly enjoy watching him now. And I thoroughly enjoy seeing him do normal kid things and I want to embrace that and I have embraced that over this past year and I think I was using control at that time with regards to the almond milk um, and the container because I he was having some behavior issues and so I think I was coming from a place of fear of like was something wrong with me as a parent something wrong with him as a child and when you're stuck in that space like the almond milk wasn't is not a big deal to me, and I did realize that um, drinking out of sharing that container is, doesn't is fine with me. But at the time, I was just so worried about um, a lot of things that everything was coming, everything that I was doing, and all the control I was exerting was coming from that place of fear. Yeah, and so are you broken, and is your son broken? No, <laughs> absolutely not, and. I think the biggest shift for me in this like second half of the membership this year has been realizing that even when my children aren't perfect, don't act perfectly, which is impossible anyway, nothing is wrong with me as a mom. And it's taken me, uh, I'm still working on that, but it's taken me a long time, all, all these six years to realize that, that I am, I am actually a good mom. And um, I, I do feel very proud of myself. Like I'm being a little emotional, but um, I get shivers actually and shaking because yeah, I do feel really proud of myself and I feel proud that I, I do genuinely see the goodness and um, amazingness in my son, even when he's having a hard time with his behavior. <laughs>